Ending World War II with a boo. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were two very distinct events in history. They were the cause of Japan's surrender and ended World War II after six years due to Japan's unwillingness to stop fighting and let the U.S. win. There were 66,000 deaths in Hiroshima and 39,000 deaths in Nagasaki after each of the bombings. Hiroshima was bombed on August 6, 1945, and Nagasaki was bombed three days later on August 9, 1945, giving the Emperor of Japan, Emperor Hirohito, just two and a half days to surrender. These bombs were created by an organization called the Manhattan Project. It was led by scientist J. Robert Oppenheimer. They employed 130,000 workers and spent $2.2 billion on their work. Contrary to popular belief, Oppenheimer did not want to launch the bombs and was purely there for research. In the end, it was President Harry Truman, the president at the time, who decided to launch the bomb. Oppenheimer's disagreement with the president led to Truman calling Oppenheimer a crybaby scientist and was going out of his way to ruin Oppenheimer's reputation. Our thesis is that President Truman had other variables influencing his decision to drop the atomic bombs on Japan such as racial bias, wanting to test on human subjects, the arms race against Germany for the first atomic bomb, and an interest in scaring the Soviet Union. Our project integrates the theme of turning points in history because the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki ended World War II. The president at the time, Harry S. Truman, was the one who ordered the bombs to be dropped. His decision was crucial because if he never made this decision, many aspects of the features and outcomes would be very different. For example, the move towards democracy would have been continued in people like Douglas MacArthur, a five-star ranking military general who won a Medal of Honor and 17 other military medals, would have worked to suppress political, civil, and religious liberties and force democratic elections on Japan, which is very different than our reality today. Also, Truman's racial bias still impacts the modern world. In almost every place in the world, besides Japan, there is some kind of racial hate or discomfort towards Japan and Japanese people. This impacts normal people's everyday lives in the U.S. There are still debates about whether or not Truman's decision was due to a racial bias or him simply acting to end the war, mark his win in the race to create bombs, wanting to use the Japanese as test subjects, or not giving Japan enough time to surrender. This evidence shows that our project integrates turning points in history. President Truman had many reasons to bomb Hiroshima and Nagasaki, one of which being racial bias. While Sherman is known for desegregating the army, this may have simply been to appeal the army to more African Americans. He is also known for his astonishing change from being a segregationist to being a civil rights activist, but in reality, the only thing he did was signing the Executive Order 9981 and claimed, there shall be equality of treatment and opportunity for all persons in the armed services without regard to race, color, religion, or natural origin. That same day, he signed an executive order to desegregate the federal workforce. While this change improved the quality of life for many African Americans in the government, it also drew African Americans in because of the equality of the army. It is also known that African American and Japanese American soldiers were chemically tested on in the army, which could also be a reason he wanted to appeal to the African Americans. Furthermore, before Truman's so-called huge change, Truman was very racist towards Japanese, Chinese, and African American people. In a letter towards his future wife, Bess, at the time, he wrote, I think one man is just as good as another so long as he's honest and decent and not an N or a Chinaman. Uncle Will says that the Lord made a white man from dust, an N for mud, and he threw up what was left and it came down as a Chinaman. Uncle Will does hate Chinese and Japs, Truman continued. So do I. It's race prejudice, I guess. But I'm strongly of the opinion that Negroes ought to be in Africa, yellow men in Asia, and the white men in Europe and America. Even though Truman claims to have changed, some of his hate towards Japanese people and Japan in general must have lasted for him to detonate not one, but two bombs over Japan. Another reason President Truman may have launched the bombs was wanting to use the Japanese people as human guinea pigs. At the time, they only had three years to test the bombs and research them before launching, so they would have wanted to know more about nuclear energy and atomic bombs in general. The second bomb, the bigger Fat Man bomb, would have been the real bomb, and the first and smaller Little Boy would have been a test bomb. 
Plutonium, the main component of the bombs, is known for being very unstable, radioactive, and untested. Uranium, another component in the bombs, is also known as being unstable, second only to plutonium. These two elements together would usually have needed decades of research to be used safely, and the insufficient amount of research would have compelled the president to want to drop the bombs for scientific research. Not only that, but the Manhattan Project's Trinity test bomb was detonated only a month before the bombs on Japan, being in July of 1945, while the atomic bombs were dropped in August of 1945. This would have given the Manhattan Project only a month to take changes to the bombs based on research from the Trinity and just one test of the bomb so they would have a very limited understanding of atomic power and radioactivity. Because of this, the Manhattan Project and President Truman would have wanted to have more tests on the bombs, so when the opportunity to attack Japan twice presented itself, it would have been an obvious choice. Most people believe that these bombs were dropped to prevent invasion or the war from going on much longer, but evidence shows that they may have dropped the bomb to scare the Soviet Union. Using the atomic bomb would impact the relationship between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Russia was planning to create their own atomic bomb in five years to come, 1950. In a letter to President Harry S. Truman, Secretary Clinton P. Anderson wrote, I listened carefully to this testimony that the Russians might be able to make an atomic bomb in five years, 1945. This shows Russia was prepared and ready to create their own bombs. Later in the letter, he also wrote, Let me remind you also that the Russians have been skillful in the knowledge of the airplane, and yet it was our planes which they needed in great numbers to defend their country. This shows that even though Russia has much knowledge, they still rely on the U.S. for protection. This would have scared the Soviet Union because the U.S. can accomplish things independently, while the Soviet Union needs the help of the U.S. to accomplish the same exact things. The last over-influencing reason President Truman decided to drop the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was the arms race against Germany to have an atomic bomb and attempt to scare the Germans and show that they had more bombs available. The Manhattan Project, a huge industrial project, was much bigger and more efficient than Germany's facility, dubbed Uranberein, or Uran Project, meaning Uranian Club, or Uranium Project, and was bound to create the first atomic bomb. Still, the Manhattan Project's needs for secrecy slowed them down indefinitely, while Germany's Uranberein was out in the open, allowing their work to be focused on research rather than secrecy. Also, while Ern Baron's main purpose was to create a bomb, the Manhattan Project was more focused on research and learning, and the twins to launch the bomb by Truman had more backlash than if Ern Baron decided to launch a bomb. All of this evidence shows that the arms race against Germany was yet another variable that would compel President Truman to launch the bombs not only to show that America had won the arms race, but also to show that they had the research to launch not one, but two different types of bombs, ending Ern Baron's work. This proves that President Truman had other variables influencing him on his decision to detonate the bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In conclusion, President Truman had reasons other than ending World War II for dropping the bombs. These reasons include racial bias due to Truman's segregationist upbringing, wanting to test on human subjects because of the Manhattan Project's limited research on bombs, scaring the Soviet Union into not producing bombs and diplomatically backing off, and marking his win in the arms race against Germany to be the first to create and drop an atomic bomb. All of these variables would have caused Truman to drop the bombs, even though he claims he only wanted to drop them to swiftly end the war.